most common and familiar microscope is the optical microscope or light microscope. This uses a combination of lenses to magnify the object being studied. Since the microscope uses visual light, these microscopes are cheap, lightweight, with the earliest form to be created. And though they've changed over the years and a number of different variants have now been produced, they still generally work in the same way and have the same limitations. The microscope has at least two lenses, the eyepiece lens and the objective lens. These invert and then re-invert the image and greatly magnify it. The objective lens can normally be switched, enabling the magnification to vary from different enlargements, like for example 10 times through 100 times and finally 1000 times in a standard microscope. Generally, light microscopes can't magnify things much larger than 1000 times due to resolution issues relating to the wavelength of light. We're looking at items which are less than a wavelength of light apart. The edges of the items start to blend into each other and can't be visually separated. Focusing adjusts the distance between the two lenses and the object and enables the image or parts of the image to be brought into focus. In order to view an object magnified by the microscope, it has to have a light source below the object so light passes through it and upwards towards the eyepiece. Now, though most specimens viewed through a light microscope are normally dead, this isn't essential to the operation of the microscope, meaning that microscopic life can be observed using living processes. Probably most common of these being the Daphnia or the water flea. Due to the specimen being observed being illuminated from below, the slides that the specimen are mounted on may be transparent, so glass is normally used. A special version of the slide can have grids on them to help in counting, and others can have a concave or shallow depression on the slide for thicker objects to be studied. In order to hold the specimen in place and prevent damage or contamination, a thin cover slip of glass is usually placed on top of the slide. Specimens are normally thinly sliced before being placed onto the slide to allow light to pass through them. This might also mean that it can be difficult to make out details within the object. So in order to make structures like, say, cell walls stand out in a sample, various stains can be introduced. You can buy pictures of some samples with bright colours like blue, yellow and red. And details can also be highlighted by altering the light source, including polarising it or making the background dark. Another way that objects can be made to stand out is using a specialist light microscope called a fluorescence microscope. Here, as the name suggests, the subject is made to glow. These microscopes require a more carefully controlled light source and stains than the normal light microscopes. This means that both greater resolution and also targeting of specific locations can be obtained than otherwise would be the case. This enables detection and distribution of specific proteins as an example. This process can also, though, damage the specimen after a time. However, they do produce some of the most spectacular images from a light microscope. So as an introduction to light microscopes, do we be wary of people trying to sell you a microscope with a 2,000 magnifications? So they're not actually capable of resolving that image on a magnification scale for a light microscope. 